Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, and welcome to another video of the Diamond Trading. My name is Daniel, and today, guys, we're doing an update on Nokia. That's right. Uh, Nokia have just come out with their fourth quarter results of uh, 2021 and the full year results of 2021. Uh, exciting. A lot of things to be looking at. We're going to go through, uh, we have the actually the call transcript here, which we can go and have a look at. But I think, to be honest with you, the best thing to do is actually hear it from the, the horse's mouth. So we can go straight in and, and have a listen to what uh, Pekka had to say to uh, in the CNBC interview. Um, so let's have a, let's have a quick overview of what's been happening, uh, what's happened. Uh, this was actually announced on Thursday, okay, so Thursday the 3rd of February. Uh, overall, very good, quite exciting. Prices, on, if we have a look at the share price, it hasn't moved a lot. Um, probably a, pro a lot of people are wondering why. I'm going to give you why I th the reason I think it's not moving a lot and how it could be moving very quickly in the very near future uh, so yeah we'll go through and have a look at this uh, we'll look at the results we'll look at the technical analysis and we'll also listen to uh, Pekka what he has to say so uh, here's a here's the transcript so during this call um let's go straight into it so it goes down to say that um where are we we had uh, we have said throughout the year that this would be a different year uh, in terms of seasonality and that's exactly what happened we had a three percent top line growth overall in the year which is 22.2 billion euros in sales quarter four was pretty much as expected was five percent down on the year uh, making that 6.4 billion euros because they had this year in a way much more balanced seasonality compared to where the, they had in typical uh, typically been so the fourth quarter top line highlight was clearly network structure and 10 percent growth okay so overall a good year okay so pretty much as expected when it comes to seasonality so now let's look at the operating margin so the they had a strong operating margin so everything was good guys apart from their revenue was not expected but if we have a start to look at operational mar margins and free cash cash free flow uh, absolutely uh, great results so we had a strong quarter, fourth quarter 14.2 percent comparable operating margin but again this is because more stability seasonality this year and that was 119 basis points lower than extremely high and a strong quarter that they had last year but overall the full year was 12.5 percent comparable operating margin that's a 300 pace 300 basis point improvement over 2020 okay so so good let's go ahead and have a look at this guys let's go straight in and listen to what becca had to say it was a great uh, end to a, a transformational year overall in the year we improved our uh, operating margins by uh, 300 basis points from nine and a half to 12 and a half uh, we did say throughout the year that we expect uh, uh, different seasonality uh, this time, more even distribution of profits across the year, meaning that uh, the Q4 peak, as we have op often seen in the past, would not materialize. And it went pretty much as we uh, expected. We are very happy with our performance. Looking ahead, um, you're aiming for an underlying operating margin of 11 to 13 and a half percent this year and more than 14 percent in the next three to five years. Now, of course, for the whole of 2021, you saw an operating margin of 12 and a half percent. So what is going to drive that step up? Well, first of all, we are continuing to see strong end market uh, demand uh, in both mobile and uh, fixed broadband infrastructure, and that is then in turn fueling demand for uh, IP networks, uh, optical networks, routers, and uh, so on. That's one thing. Then the second thing is that we have significantly increased uh, in technology development, R&D technology leadership. We have now a much stronger product position that, than we had uh, a year or two ago. And when you put those two together, now the next target is that we will accelerate growth and uh, margin expansion. You have promised in the past to spend whatever it takes to make the technological investments necessary to, um, you know, gain market share. What does the investment trajectory look like from here? We increased significantly our investment in 5G development, and that's especially what I said that we will invest what it, whatever it takes to to repeat our 4G success in 5G. And that's exactly what we have done. We have now excellent feedback from our customers uh, as to our technology competitiveness in uh, 5G. And of course, these investments will continue. I believe that, that the best way to deliver returns to shareholders is to take care of your technology competitiveness. 
what have you seen in terms of market share gains? I know investors are very keen to understand um, just how much you've closed that gap versus the competition with 5G. We have a combined 4G and 5G market share of uh, excluding China about uh, 26 percent. That has now stabilized on that level, and now our next goal is to start increasing it from there. Then in other businesses, especially in mobile, uh, no, no, sorry, fixed infrastructure, in uh, fixed broadband uh, networks, we have a significant increase in market share. We had 35% uh, growth in that business, which was remarkable. And you announced today a reinstatement of your dividend. I know a lot of investors were asking the question, when would you do that? Um, Okay, this is what everyone's been looking for. This is what uh, everyone's been waiting for, this dividend. So let's see what you had to say about the dividend. Give us an update on how you're thinking about your capital allocation strategy moving forward. The first priority in capital allocation is, is to always make sure that we have enough money to invest in R&D because, again, that is the most important thing we, we need to do to our shareholders. Once we have taken care of that, as we now have, then the next priority is shareholder distributions. Well, we uh, are targeting fairly uh, uh, stable uh, over the time uh, increasing uh, dividends. Uh, now we are starting uh, from eight euros, uh, eight cents uh, per uh, share. And then, in addition to that, if there are situations where we feel that we may have excess cash on balance sheet, then we may also do uh, from time to time decisions to do share buybacks, as we are now doing as well. So this is good news. This is really good news. If we have a look at the overall picture of this of this company, we can see that the company. Uh, I think Pekka has uh, really emphasised this on various occasions, and he's come back and re-emphasised this that the money is really being put into research and development to be able to stay be able to stay ahead of the game. This needs to be done right in a moving market such as five G. Uh, research and development needs to go into this and this is what their focus is so this is uh, in really quite reassuring that they're putting money into this uh, to move forward now if the company able to do that have the money enough money on the on the on the sheets to do that plus do a, a, a dividend reinstate the dividend and have a share buyback program this is really quite reassuring this is reassuring for the investor okay so um so really really good guys um let's have a look at the earnings so if we have a look at the earnings per share it came in at 13 cents okay that's 13 cents dollar by the way versus the 11 cents estimate so they actually beat uh that by two cents revenue was 6.4 billion compared to the estimated 6.48 billion okay so that's really the only bad news really in terms of the earnings so they missed they missed uh, the revenue having said that uh the company did issue guidance in january of margins hitting 12.5 percent at the midpoint nokia has also proposed after earnings this morning that it tends to pay a dividend of 0 0.08 cents uh, okay so that 0 0.08 cents dollar cents that is will be paid will be paid on a quarterly basis so if you have 100 shares that would be eight dollars uh, every quarter and dividends back to you okay uh it also uh is to embark on the 600 million dollar share buyback program okay the buyback permit is to last two years they do not have details on whether the buyback is to be split evenly over two years or if some discretion can be used. Now, this is the reason, I think this is the reason why if we have a look at the price, what the price has been doing ever since they come out. So let's go and have a look at the price. Uh, if we have a look on when they came out, the, actually, the share price dropped. Okay, so people think like, what is going on here? Um, people are selling off. Okay, uh, and this is no worry to the long investor, long term investor. Uh, I have a feeling that this is going to be priced in. This will be priced in, and r investors react when this is actually announced. Okay, so this is a key point. And uh, the next meeting is on the third or uh, fourth of March, or the beginning of March, or sometime. I can't remember when the exact date is. Uh, and I think this is when we're going to see the price move. I really think uh, we still have a way to come down. We could actually drop down to the support level here, which is around about $5.60. This could happen uh, it very easily. And I would imagine we would see a bounce up and go back up to this level here, which really is a key level. So the key level, guys, to be breaking to really see uh, a, a, a turn to the upside is a $6.40 mark, okay? This is a key component, and I think this will happen very soon. I personally think this will happen very soon. Um, 
and I'm excited. I really am excited for the near future, though it's a long term. Uh, I can see this happening very, very soon. Okay, so look at the support and resistance levels. People ask, is it a good time to buy in? Uh, this is a, a great, to be honest, with, from my point of view, this is a, a, a great time uh, to be buying. I've bought more here at this level here, around about $5.50 I bought more. Okay, uh, if it drop, I'm not planning to buy any more here. Okay, because I think I've really worked out my position in this. If it does manage to come down below this level, the below the five dollar sixty mark, and we see come coming back down to here at five dollars forty, uh, I probably will pick up more. Uh, so yeah, so let's work. Let's keep our eyes out for this. This will be happening very soon, guys. I have a feeling it could be wrong, but I have a feeling this could be ha happening uh, in the next few weeks. Price could start to to uh, to be uh, worked into this now that's good so let's have a look at the end guidance so based on this guidance uh, another thing to back this up uh, on the, if we have a look at this uh, based on the guidance it means that the stock is stock is actually worth 41 percent more than what it is at the moment so according to the guidance according to the valuation this is an undervalued stock okay this is an undervalued stock and it should actually be valued around about eight dollars and sixty cents okay so if we have a look let's go back to have a look at price and zoom out on this we should see the levels so eight dollar sixty hasn't got to uh, for years okay so but this is really the valuation so this uh, eight dollar sixty seems far away if we move out if we zoom out this is what's been happening right so eight dollar sixty up here which seems about right right so which is actually the level up here so if we actually have a look at this level here this is where we hit back in September 2014. So 2014 really is where the level it should be at. This is really where it should be at, and this is quite. Uh, this is quite. Uh, when you start to look at this, you're like, well, this is, hasn't been to this price uh, for the last what eight years. Uh, so yeah, we're talking about eight years, guys. Uh, and I think the prices would be in the next year or so could get back up to this very easily. It should be up there right now. But we're seeing slowly, steady upward trend here, as you can see. Uh, if you remember what we marked out back in 2021 when I was charting these lines, I did say that the key level here is $5. It broke at $5. It went up. And now we're actually, if we have a look at the, the macro chart, we're actually consolidating here. We're consolidating and the bounce could happen very soon we have a double top here we're down at the support level and i could see this happening very soon i can see this happening very soon so i'm quite excited for the near future and the long-term future uh, for this stock so let's go back to this article and let's just have a little bit of a read what there has to say this is actually actually straight from the nasdaq uh, website on january 11th knock increased its guidance in an update of 2021 performance and also raises outlook for 2022 significantly this will have an effect of raising the company's free cash flow estimate for 2022 as a role uh, the person that wrote this article now estimates that nokia is worth at least 41 percent more than its price today or eight dollars 60 per share sorry in fact there's always a possibility that the company can restore its dividends as it promised it would consider even assuming no growth right over the next year we can assume that this revenue rate will be good enough as an estimate for 2022 okay so this price is uh, considering that even if there's no growth the price should be at that right this is also a way of being conservative in our forecasts now in addition Nokia said it's january 11th update uh, that expects an operating margin for the financial year of 2022 uh, to range between 11 and 13.5 percent that's 11 an average of 12.25 percent and applying to its 25.4 billion forecast uh, it results in operating profits of 3.11 billion dollars okay so so yeah based on his calculations uh, blah 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 if you, if you want to have a look at this i'll leave a link in the description in this article uh, the result comes to a, a dividend uh, a price of uh, eight point eight dollars sixty per share so guys that's a little bit on nokia this is good uh, i will keep you updated on nokia uh, as news comes out uh, excited guys let me know in the comments down below what you think uh, are you holding nokia you sold nokia buying more nokia i would love to hear uh, 
what you guys have to say uh guys if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button if you want to make sure that you're updated on more videos that i'll be releasing out nokia and other stocks in, in the near future guys thank you for watching take care and i'll speak to you soon now bye bye